Hello people, and welcome back to part 53 of Palavan, our vanilla city Skylines build. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for all the kind comments, suggestions and support in my last episode. You guys really enjoyed our little European road network frame here. And it's time to start filling this in today. Should have quite a nice time, I think. There's some really nice feedback on the little sunken monorail line trick as well. We'll catch a little action shot of one going past here. Yes, please. Very nice indeed. These look really cool as well, once we have kind of a city backdrop to accompany them. Lots of cars and traffic moving around here. Yeah, big fan of the little kind of split tree pattern, where it goes into like a single line. With the trees and a different type of tree as it moves into the stations. I think that's quite a nice design. But yeah, anyway, let's get started on today's episode, shall we? So what we're going to work on today um, is a zoo build. It's been a long time since we've built a zoo. The last one we did was over by Dawson. If we have a quick flyover right over here uh, so you can kind of see you can see its vibe right i really like this zoo and we integrated the road into the actual park itself and we're going to kind of expand this idea today and hopefully do something with trams and a zoo which i think from testing <laughs> is quite a nice idea and um, this is a kind of an idea pitched to me by subscriber tim i will try and find the comment where it was pitched but i might struggle to find it but we'll we'll try and We'll try and work with that suggestion, right? We want a tram line that's going to be running through the zoo. Almost like a little mini light park rail is the kind of the theme that we're going for today. I think kind of this big frame here, this little box that we've got in with the arterial roads is going to be a nice little space to kind of come in and work on this idea. Let's get started, shall we? So first and foremost, we are going to start manipulating the road network into something that we like. This is kind of the point of doing that skeleton frame that we did last episode, right? This allows us to now come in and Kind of planning what we want here. I think we'll carry on these little grassy verge arterials up until the, the monorail station. Let's come off our rear guideline temporarily. I'll bring it up to about there. I think it's going to be quite nice to have people emerge out of the monorail station into this zoo. So I think we'll run with that idea. So maybe come ahead and grab ourselves a small road. But we'll start with a road directly outside the monorail station. Now, if I wanted to squeeze some kind of plaza in here, I guess we will actually come out by that much. Now we'll leave five tiles out front and that's going to be symmetrical with the front of the station which is always going to be satisfying I think isn't it. Then we'll come ahead and maybe throw in a zoo plaza in the middle here. We can't centralize it but we well we can't centralize it in the tiles but we can just manually place it in. I think that's going to be quite a nice introduction. Then we'll grab our zoo gate. Let's maybe go for a few different sizes ones here. There's a side gate and this is a smaller one isn't it? Okay let's go for the bigger one. And then let's paint out our park area. So it's going to be quite a substantial zoo. And, uh, it should have quite a nice vibe within the city as well. When it's, it's surrounded by some more of the European assets and uh, the transport hubs in there as well. It should have a nice little place to sit within the overall lying European vibe. If that makes any sense. Of course, if you guys would like to name the zoo, this is the episode to get it in the comments. And we will rename it on a live stream at some point. So we want trams in here, right? So we're going to very temporarily drop in a tram depot. Now, this probably will be part of the overlying transport hub build, but we'll worry about the orientation of that once we come to work on that area, possibly next episode. Okay, so let's begin to plan out some initial thoughts and ideas as to how this zoo is going to sit, right? I think we're going to come out just with... A a zoo path without decorations. There's of course going to be lots of zoo paths today, which I think everyone's going to appreciate, right? And I think we're going to start out with the insect, amphibian, and reptile house, almost to serve as like a main entrance into the zoo, right? I think it's a little more of an important building than the actual zoo gate itself, which actually has some fireworks on the roof for some, for some reason. Why, what does that say? Oh, fun powder. I've never noticed that before. Fun powder. Kind of a strange place to store it, though. But anyway, oh, in the monorail station. So yeah, we can kind of see here, right? Gives us a little more importance to the front of the zoo. I think I'm a big fan of that. So we're we'll with that idea for right now. And then let's continue to kind of map out our little path network here. So of course, because this zoo is going to have public transport integrated into it, it's not going to be a zoo that makes us vast amounts of money. We will get some people coming through the gate and we'll probably stick a side gate elsewhere on the other side of the park as well. Okay, so before we kind of build anything serious today, I want to kind of discuss the template and the design as to how we're going to integrate trams and everything else into the park. 
So I think what we're going to do is come through with a little bit of some zoo path with decorations and every time the path touches the tram line we will switch to the version with decorations and I kind of have an idea as to how this is going to look, okay? So let's come out with our tram line. We'll bring it up to about here. Touch shorter than that just so we can not destroy the path. There we go. I want to make sure that we're sinking in here. People will be able to connect through there. Maybe even afford to bring it a touch closer. So a little something like that. And then let's switch back to our zoo path here. And then we'll bring it right up alongside as tight as we can. And then similar along this side as well. So just snap into our angle and nothing else here. So I think this is what we're here to create today, right? This is the spice sample so every time the paths touch the tram line we want them to be with decorations and when they're not on the tram lines we will use the ones without decorations that's going to be quite a nice little template isn't it i think we'll run with that idea let's carry on expanding the tram line here i think what we will do is possibly downgrade this into one way mm, i'm not sure we'll, we'll we'll kind of see how the idea develops as to whether or not we run with one way welcome to a vigorously planned build everyone <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and box in the entire region um, with Zoo Fence. Now we kind of have our palette decided on. And then we'll kind of work on the front of the entrance here as to what's going to sit. Probably got some car park spice in here today, I imagine. But I guess we'll kind of see, right? Okay, so we've surrounded the zoo with fencing now. I think what we're going to come in and do is some classic car parks out the front, of course. It's always nice to kind of tether on some car park designs onto the front of a more important build like this. Of course, for those that don't know how to do it, we grab ourselves a district and give it the organic and local produce specialization. Go ahead and fill it out with alternating two by two patterns, wait for them to fill in, and then we'll eventually have something that looks a little bit like this. You know, it gives a little more importance to the front of the zoo. And then we'll also repeat this on this side as well. Okay, so we got our car packs out the front now. Nice little repeated designs, only a few of them, let's go kind of two overboard. And then how about we maybe come through into these spaces here? And bring in some repeated zoo fence designs either side of them. They're a little tricky to kind of get right in the corners, but a little bit of patience we can get there. There you go. And then maybe let's decide on a tree. I think we'll kind of move away from the usual pallet and pallet for this area. Maybe let's go for some. Maybe some bamboo. It's uh, something we very rarely use. Okay, maybe a little repeated bamboo pattern in each of these little kind of three-quarter boxes. And how about a couple of rocks? Alternate the pattern as well. Okay. And then we've kind of got a big space to fill here. And I think what we'll run with is the park maintenance building, if we can squeeze it in. Go ahead and grab it here. We're a little tight. We can get in this angle. I think we'll go. We'll go with that. Okay, and maybe just to help kind of secure this building, we'll come in with some roads just around the back of it as well. Kind of getting some gnarly terraforming there, but I think we can live with it. I think we can. Okay. Need to tidy up some of this sugar maple pattern as well from last episode. But we can detail this out with fencing and whatnot. I think it'll survive. But again, kind of looking from all angles now, we can see the uh, the zoo just beginning to develop its vibe, which I think I'm happy with. I think I am. Okay, also added in a side gate over here. Uh, let's continue to draw out the tram network. We'll of course come to just the angle for this. Draw out another section right here. Okay, and then let's come back into our zoo. So we'll keep this running for a short time and then we'll start bringing some pathways around here to box the asset in. Of course remembering our kind of design palette that we want to uh, have the zoo path with decorations up against the tram lines. I think what we'll do here is maybe actually switch into a touch of elevated zoo path which is a traditional palavan spice that hasn't been seen for a long time now actually. Okay, bring it off here and then we'll bring it back down to earth. 
It's the easiest to do it from this side. Okay, then we'll come out by five units. Oh, and then across. And how about that? A little bit of elevated zoopath over some transpice. Now the two favourite things coming together, right? Okay, so let's continue to look at some possible asset placements. We're not going to connect these two paths up here. And allow people to walk around to the right if they want to get in there, which is fine. So we'll trim up some of these path ends here too. Let's have a look at what other assets we can maybe squeeze in. Maybe, um... How about the monkey palace in here? Looks like we can back this up. Just onto where the kind of bridge elevates, which I think would be a nice little design. Let's have a look at that. Go for monkey palace. Again, I guess we don't need this path here now, do we? I guess we'll leave it in for right now. Maybe take it out for some decoration later. Okay, again, check with more angles. Get a nice view down on some monkey action here from the bridge. See them in there. Here they are. Oh. Cheeky monkeys, if you will. <laughs> yeah, I think we will do. Let's actually come off this angle then. We'll come to road length too. Okay. And then we'll come down again by those five units on either side. Then we'll draw this out. Connect this one in. And then, of course, as we come back to the tram line, we will switch back to Zoopath with decorations, remembering that palette that we've set ourselves for the build today. I guess they can. Bring up at both points, a little bit of symmetrical elevated zoo spice. Okay, be cute to see how much action that gets. Nice way for them to cross over as well into different sides of the tram line. Very nice. So there is a couple of assets like a raised bridge built inside them, and I think it's the elephant enclosure is one of them. Have a look at it here. No, it's not. The elephant isn't one of them. Is it the buffalo? Giraffe. Yeah, the giraffes have it. So they have like an internal elevated zoo path within them. And I'm quite keen on aligning them with the road here. So it gives us that nice drive by. So I think we'll kind of run with the idea for right now. So we'll take this out and let's come back to our zoo line or tram line rather. Zoo on the brain today. Okay, so we'll start to align these larger assets up with the inbuilt paths. Against our tram line here. There we go, that should be okay. Let's kind of see this aesthetic here, okay? Yeah, that's what you want. Just very slightly elevated zoo path as we come by the drive-by here, which is also bordered by the tram line as well. Very, really, very happy with this. <laughs> this is a really nice idea of uh, putting trams through a zoo. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Okay, and again, we'll come back to zoo path with decorations. We'll come up as close as we can. There we go. Order that one in. And then we'll also bring this down to the actually just bring the tram road out on an angle so we know where to end the zoo path. Okay, I'm aware that our car parks are dying. We will get some population in here. Let's try and have a look at some of that now actually while we're here. Um let's bring out another district and we'll just set it to a small European area for right now. And we'll throw in some high density. Let's go for European. And then let's just take this out so we get those central squares. Let's come off of this one. There we go. And then put that in for right now. Of course, this road network will change once we come to work on the transport hub. But let's just get some high density in here for those car parks. Okay, so let's go ahead and have a look at the next asset. I'm pretty sure it's the buffalo enclosure that has it. And if we can find the little buffaloes, where are they? The bison. Yeah, bison. This is the one. Okay, so we'll do exactly the same thing again. Align it against the tram line. Seems like a pretty good shout. And then we'll grab the zoo path with the decorations. And then hook them together like so. So let's kind of see how we're looking. Yeah, I kind of see they're almost like two nicely paired assets, right? It's a shame this one doesn't have the walking path around it, so it's not symmetrical, but we can live with that. Okay, so we could bring the tram line back through the middle here. Okay, so I think we will actually bring the tram through the two assets here. 
We're going to get a connection here, and they're also connected down this side as well, which is nice. Everyone's going to enjoy that. Have a look at how this very first European high density residential is going to develop. Up on the corner here. Yeah, I don't think I'm talking too bad, is it? Lots of kind of uh, mismatched shapes and patterns and styles. Very European. Maybe bring another road behind here and a nice little block going on. I was going to say, we're not here to do that today though, right? Okay, let's now come back to designing our path network here. It looks like we can get a pathway right behind the giraffes. And then we'll come up here. Of course, remembering our palette to switch back to decorations as we come alongside tram line. We've got a nice big space developing here, so let's have a look at another possible asset we can we can use. We have the antelope enclosure. Looks like we can get that in right up alongside. And that's a very kind of tightly packed in action is what I'm going for today. Okay, and then maybe we do also have the flamingos as well. Now this is an asset with the paths already on it, isn't it? Which makes it a little more awkward to place, so maybe not that one here. How about the rhino enclosure? Make sure we're okay. Again, creating lots of nice little corridors like this within the park is what I'm after. Okay. I think I'm happy with that so far. We'll generate a nice aerial view here as well. Very cute indeed. Let's hook this other entrance in now and kind of work with the rest of the tram line. So we're not going to be quite parallel at this point, which is okay. The thing is where we will feed this tram network into the rest of the city. But we may just have it as like a little zoo tram loop straight out of the transport hub and then make it part of the tram interchange to switch between the different tram lines that, are th that will flow around this part of the city. But oh, it's all up for debate, I suppose, isn't it? We'll kind of see how things develop. Okay, so let's start coming out with our tram line here. So a little bit of a curb in. I think we can live with that, okay? And then we'll do the same thing with our path of decorations. Come onto that freeform tool. And then keep it hugging that path. Fantastic. Same thing on this side too. I'm actually really enjoying this build today. Very different style of park. Of course it doesn't have to be a zoo. You can do this with theme parks as well. Kind of any other park for that matter. City parks also. You just have to be aware if you are going to introduce public transport into a park like this, people will be able to enter so it's not going to make all the money in the world but just them by them just coming through there at the front gate. So let's bear that in mind if you're going to kind of run with the idea here today. So we'll now start to work on decorating this other side of the entrance, okay? So maybe come in with a plaza. And then we'll come off everything but the angle here, okay? Box this in. We can't quite connect through there, which is a little bit annoying. I guess we could amend it if we wanted to, which I think we will. Just for the symmetrical satisfaction of that kind of opening plaza, right? And then we'll come out on a straight line here and then just reform into that corner. Okay, I think what we'll do here is maybe have a look. Introducing a couple of little kind of key entertainment assets. Just remembering to the rest of the path network through. Can't quite come through there, but that's fine. We'll throw in another attraction at this point. Come through to there. And maybe uh, a couple of restrooms at the head as well. And then let's grab maybe a cafe next door. And then fly through into our decoration options here. And then let's have a look at possibly expanding the cafe with some tiles. I'm aware that we have the prop line tool here, but not needed for something this small, right? Have some fencing, right? possibly some farm. Okay. 
box that in ever so slightly, only a little small bit of detailing. And then just give it some tables out front. And then come through with some street lights and decorate it. And then let's see how we'll get night time. Yeah, okay, I think that's quite a cute extension of the asset, right? I'm happy with that. I think we will also carry on the zoo fence to run behind these assets too. We can maybe even carry on bringing it up alongside the path. Is this a new potential spice combination to score your zoo path and farm fence together? Yeah, I think I like that. Or maybe repeat that during the detail and time lapse, of course. So let's start to have a look at including some of our final attractions now. And I think we're going to bring the pathway possibly up until here, right? I think this will be a nice, sensible place to end it. You can look into that one with the zoo pocket decoration. And let's have a look what we can squeeze in. So let's go for lions. So snap nodes are being a little bit difficult. That's fine. We'll just come through and draw these ones in first instead. And then come through like that. Very nice indeed. Okay, maybe some connections off of these points too. Okay, so we can throw this one over here. Probably won't use every enclosure today. Just with the space that we're working with. But again, just kind of checking from all angles, making sure Everyone's looking good. Bring this down as well. And then down here. And we'll build some kind of like introductory plaza or court here for people to go and enjoy. Let's maybe bring the path down to that point. And we do want the elephants in as well. So let's take away touch of these kind of bordering guidelines now we've got them placed in. And the elephants are here. Fantastic. We can squeeze them in. Again, right up alongside that fence, which should give us a fairly nice drive-by from the main road here. Okay. Elephants look a little bit like, like they're made out of cloth. <laughs> There's a little bit of a weird texture on them. What's like the, uh, the patchwork elephant for anyone that... What, is that what it's called? I can't remember. There was like a book that we read when we were a kid and it had like a... A patchwork elephant. The, the, the name is escaping me. I'll see if I can find it on Google Images and throw it up on the screen. But yeah, some nice elephants in there as well. Happy with that. Okay, so I think the last enclosure I want to work with is going to be the moose and reindeer enclosure. And we can almost squeeze it in here, but we're just going to need to rework uh, the path layout ever so slightly. So let's take away some of these paths and the tram network. And we'll have a look as to what we can do to accommodate this. So let's come out with our tram line from here instead. We'll come to the road guideline there. Very nice. Let's see how we're doing for space now. So we can squeeze it in there by the looks of it. Very nice indeed. Okay, that's going to be all right. Then maybe we can actually come in with some repeated birdhouse spice. Um, which <laughs> isn't something I ever thought I would say, but welcome to Palavan, everyone. Now let's come down with the path networks again, and then just draw these guys up. Fantastic. And then we'll bring the birdhouse down onto this point right here. Okay. That's going to connect in perfectly. Very satisfying to see. Can't come out from here though, right, I'm guessing. No, we can't. Okay, that's all right, though. We'll get the moose and reindeer in there, too. Oh, there's a touch of dimensional tearing, isn't there? Hmm. If we look at it from the right angle, we can't see it. <laughs> Just pretend that that didn't happen. Actually, this might be a nice place to separate it away from the uh, tram line, actually. And how about we come back out from this one? Yeah, okay. Let's break the pattern like that. I think that'll be a nice little way to conclude the enclosure. I think we've only missed out the um, the flamingos, but who cares about flamingos, right? Like, who goes to a zoo to see the flamingos? 
and the comments is flooded with <laughs> flamingo enthusiasts. Okay, I think this is going to give us a nice base structure. And um, what we'll do now, we can also start to introduce some rock gardens in here as well, I think. So maybe where we have our farm fence, let's have a quick discussion about a couple of decoration kind of palettes and techniques that we're going to use for the zoo today. We'll come through with some fencing. And how about some larger rock garden action? Can we squeeze some of the larger rocks in? Oh, no, we can't. It's enormous. Oh, we very nearly can. I bet there's a sweet spot in there somewhere. Yes, there is. <laughs> very nice indeed. And then we'll place in some of our bamboo. Maybe some palms as well. Make it a little bit exotic. Let's try and get away from the, the pines and the conifers that is everywhere else in Palavan. Okay, and help fill out some of our larger areas with some rock gardens. Extreme rock gardens here, but I think that's going to work quite nicely, isn't it? We do have these big open areas right up at the front here, which again, I think we can fill out with more rock gardens and some kind of like plaza designs that we've got going on over here. And then in little areas like this, this is a great opportunity again to keep expanding the asset. Um, again, we don't have to stick to just part life, just to zoo assets here, sorry. Um, part life assets will also work nicely. Um, probably stay away from the amusement park stuff. How would nature reserve assets integrate into a zoo? Maybe. The fire might scare the animals though. Well, everyone, that does feel like a good place to jump into a detailed time lapse. I'm really happy with the area view here. Uh, let's get some trams flowing around this area as well, just so we can kind of see them moving. I think that'd be really nice to see. And then I come and fill out these dead spaces. Uh, lots of detailing. Get some repeated tree patterns up alongside the edge of the fence and tidy up some of this monorail action as well. And I'll also come through and make a couple of blocks of these high density residentials, just so we can kind of get a European backdrop to the zoo. as a little spice sample of what's to come if you like. Otherwise, I'll speak to you all in a minute. Okay guys, that is going to do it for today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video today, a like below is always appreciated. Even if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. If you've really enjoyed it, maybe consider subscribing to the channel if you aren't already. Really cute zoo build today, and I'm a huge fan of these trams flowing through. Uh, they aren't getting that much use yet, of course, just because there's not that much stuff around this part of the city yet. However, once we come to build the transport hub and start feeding more builds into this area, the trams will become busier and we'll then feed them out of one side of the zoo and into the rest of the city. But as far as it goes for the first European build in Palavin, I'm fairly happy with this, and it's nice to see some European high density up along the side here as well. There was an absolute ton of detailing in this episode, you guys wouldn't have seen it all, so hang around for the rest of the outro Taj, and let me know what you think down in the comments below. But otherwise, I will shut up, and I will leave it there. I want to thank you all so much for watching, and as always, 
Enjoy the rest of your day.